WD Black and WD Blue drives are an interesting debate that's been going on for a little bit, and it kind of brings up the question of is it worth it to spend a little bit more for a more performance-oriented drive like a Black versus kind of a cheaper drive. And while hard drives are kind of falling out of fashion, I decided to do a comparison here, because I have two drives that are basically identical in every other way and from the same era, except for the fact that one's the Black and rated for performance, and one's the Blue and designed more for a cost-optimized kind of consumer system. Looking at the spec sheet, there's a couple major differences. The black is rated for 7200 RPM versus 5400 RPM on the blue. The black has 32 megs of onboard cache versus 16 on the blue. There's also talk online about um, drives, the black drives having better optimized firmware and some other things, but that's really hard to know and there's no way to easily take a look as an outsider of what type of firmware they're running on here exactly. These drives are a little bit older model-wise, but they do still seem to be being sold. This one for about $45 for the blue and about $55 to $60 for the black. For performance testing, I'm going to take a look at a few things. I'm going to use FIO to run some artificial tests of just looking at different workloads, so like sequential, random, um, reads and writes, and see how it does in all of those. And then I'm going to just run Windows 10 on it and go through a list of applications and time how opening things on and see if you'd actually notice a difference using those tasks. I'm going to put the WD Blue and the WD Black in comparison to a few other models. I have a 500 gig um, Toshiba, a competitor to mostly the Blue. I have a 1 terabyte Seagate, another 5400 RPM drive, but this one is a 1 tera, so see how adding a bit of capacity. These are two older Samsung drives and an HDST. These two do are a bit thicker. I think these are 9 millimeters versus 7, I want to say. And then I'm just going to throw an SSD in the mix too, just to kind of see how much of an does an SSD matter. My test system that I'll be using for doing the real-world timed benchmark testing, it is an FX8350 on a 990FX UD5 board, R9290, with 12 gigs of RAM. Um, looking at the OS install itself, I have a few programs I'm going to be going through a timed install. I'm planning to run it three times, but might vary depending on the exact um, the deviations between those testing. I'm going to start doing a reboot. I'm going to try opening a game, so I'm going to be using Metro Last Light, so time until the main menu. I'm going to be doing a Windows Defender quick scan. I'm going to be running on my LibreOffice open to see how long it takes to open a document. I'm going to be using 7-zip to compress a file. These listed workloads are something that should be relatively reproducible and relatively common as workloads and kind of an easy way to take a look. I'm going to do this by taking the system, doing a block clone using DD onto all the drives and then running in the same fashion. I have another Core 2 quad system here that I'm going to be using for the FIO testing. For the um, con storage controller, I have a LSI SAS 2008 controller. I'm going to be using FIO and Fedora 32 to be testing the performance. I have my own script that runs a few different tests, including a sequential read, sequential write, loaded queue depth reads and writes, and then a mid queue depth um, mixed workload. Now let's take a look at the results. So I'm going to first take a look at the results of real world testing. So I used a stopwatch to time many different activities. While not the best method, after running six tests, there's no significant result between them. Um, the means were a bit better for the um, black drives, but it wasn't significant, and standard deviations were massive. Might look at this more in the future, but it seems like there's just a lot of either optimizations or background tasks or other things that weren't controlled for. So this probably is not a good way to measure hard drive performance. The thing is, while the 7200 RPM black drive was better, it wasn't that much better, and if you care at all about performance when running applications, an SSD will smoke these drives. Now let's take a look at the artificial FIO benchmark. So these are running using a program called FIO, which I can run my custom tests on. So looking at sequential workloads, we see that the black drive is a good amount better from about 147 to 120 megabytes on the blue. Same with writes, about 145 to 119. And the random workloads were a reasonable amount better too. I also went and divided them to show the difference between them, and looking at all the workloads except for one that seemed to be a little bit lower, oddly, the rest of them were about 5 to 20, high 20 percentage better. Now, I also looked at comparing 7200 RPM divided by 5400 RPM, which would be the theoretical speed up if you just spun the platter faster and could just read everything faster. And while nothing was at the full theoretical max, it was getting closer, especially for like the sequential on workloads. Compared to all the other hard drives I looked at, they're all roughly similar in terms of performance, no massive outliers. The next best was the one terabyte Seagate drive, probably because it was a new drive that potentially had denser platters or just more modern optimizations. The other drives all seemed to be 5400 RPM and performed relatively similarly to the blue, showing the black was one of the few well-performing drives I had on hand. 
looking at random workloads, the SSD smoked everything as expected. Now the question comes to what would I recommend buying? Um, for 500 gig laptop drives, realistically, buy an SSD. They don't really cost much more and pretty much even the cheapest of SSDs are gonna smoke any mechanical hard drive for almost all uses. Now, if you look at other drives, like larger storage drives and stuff, 7200 RPM is a reasonable improvement. So if it isn't costing you extra, the power consumption is not a major concern, or other potential issues like noise, you might as well go with the 7200 RPM drive. But if you're doing something where you end up spending a good amount more money for 7200 RPM, it's probably not worth it. It's not a huge jump in performance. If you need the huge jump in performance, you might want to look at other possible solutions like RAID or caching or just going solid state. Thanks for watching this video looking at different hard drives and subscribe for more videos like this in the future.